Uh, welcome to my art exhibition. I want to introduce to you one by one. This art is so close to my heart. The first piece is called Baby Moses, God be with you, my child. Here is a prayer for every baby born during the pandemic. As in the case of Moses, none of these children is born in the wrong time. So long that we give them our blessings and we pray for the Heavenly Father's blessing upon their life, there's so much presence of the Lord in your child's life. Can you feel not only the present, the invisible present surround this beautiful baby in the basket, but I can also feel the brushes of the angel's wings all over this place. Come with me. The second one here is a depiction of a still calm soul that is filled with so much heavenly peace. The boat here represents our lives our ordinary day-to-day -day life. And yet, it's not even the main focus of the painting. Can you feel the invisible presence? Can you feel the perfect peace surrounding this empty boat? I know that someday, when my boat is unmanned, someday, even when I'm gone, I'm no longer alive, the one who's taking care of me will take care of my children and my family. He is my peace, and so long as long as my heart belongs to Him, I can say to me and to you any time of the day and through any season in your life that it is always well with our soul in Jesus Christ. And speaking about the man of God Himself, or the God-man, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, He is 100% man, He is 100% God, he is our Savior. He came into the earth and he was a baby child. Yet when he grew up, at the age of 30 years old, he started his public ministry after his baptism in the Jordan River. He died for our sins because he is the perfect man. He is sinless. Yet on the third day, he rose again to show that he's no ordinary man. He is actually our creator, God himself in the form of man, Jesus Christ. And this incident has been recorded in the Bible. This is after his resurrection. For 40 days, he appeared to his disciples. And one of those incidents, uh, incidents I, have, I have portrayed on this canvas, when Jesus suddenly showed up at a certain lake, when he pointed to his disciples, Peter, John, and James, they tried to, caught, to catch fish all night long, long, and they didn't get any. And yet Jesus said to them, throw your net on the right. So I imagine why Jesus specifically, particularly asked them to throw their net on the right instead of on the left. The right or left isn't better from, from one another. But it is because Jesus says so. And if we obey him, we will see our miracles at hand. And this is exactly what happened as they throw their net on the right they have the greatest catch of their lives. I do hope that this painting will, will remind you that following Jesus' instruction is the best to do. And it is the most, one of the most colorful and bright colored painting. I love this piece very much, and I do hope that you like it too. And here we go. This is the most priceless of this number of series of paintings that I'm introducing to you today. And this one is called Elijah, the Father's Heart. Because the Bible says in the book of Malachi, and when Elijah comes, he will turn the Father's heart back to his children and the children's heart back to the Father's. I know Elijah is a very powerful prophet. And what happens right here is, God sends fire upon the altar that he builds for him. And the people of Israel, they all get scared. They've never seen such a miracle. But please see through the power. It is, it is all about the love of the Father. You see, there is so much of the father, Father's love here on this painting. You see here, there is a daddy hugging his son and his son embracing his father. This is all about the Father's love for us. That that day when Elijah prays to heaven, God shows his heart. 
He's not only sending his fire down the altar, he's actually showing them how his heart is crying out for his children to come back to him, to love him, to worship him. When we put God first in our lives, our family relationship will also restore. Our relationships will also heal. And there's so much healing on this piece of art. And this is a grand demonstration uh, in a visual way of the Heavenly Father's love for you and I. Yo wei ai wo de tian fu, ta yong yuan bu fang qi wo, ta ai de tong zai si wo wan quan, wo zhen zhi ta gu nian zhe wo, wo zhi ta gu nian zhe wo. He loves you. And because God must be everything in our life, He's first and foremost, He should be the center of our lives. He should be above anything that we could love in this life. This is a great painting to remind us of this value. This is Lot's wife. Let me introduce you to her. Uh, in the story of the Bible, she turned into a pillar of salt because she was half-hearted in following God's direction. She turned around and, and to see the Sodom and Gomorrah that were burning with fire of judgment because her wealth, all her diamonds, all her jewelries, they're still left behind, you see. But Lot's wife could teach us something today, something that could save your future, something that could uh, keep your children right on track with God something that can keep happiness in your family, not to mention holiness. You must love God first, then people, then things. And you must love life before you love anything. Do not let money be in between you and your spouses, in between you and your children and your parents. Never let material things be in between us and our God. Most of the enjoyment of life doesn't even come in the form of any physical thing. It is in relationship, God's greatest asset. And thankfully, Lot's wife has taught us that. You know, I'm an Indonesian, all right, but my heart is Taiwanese. I love Taiwan with all my heart, not to mention I've got so many friends and spiritual family here in this beautiful land. And whenever I pray for Taiwan, because Taiwan is a regular uh, prayer subject on my prayer list, I always mention Taiwan and my Taiwanese friends in my prayers every day. And once, as I was praying, God showed me a vision, and that vision I poured on this canvas. That vision is Taiwan washed in the blood or covered in the blood of Jesus. Don't worry, Taiwan. Jesus will protect you always. Whatever political turmoil, economical, or even sicknesses and diseases that can threaten the life of a nation, I believe that as we pray, Taiwan shall be spared. Taiwan shall be blessed. Taiwan is prosperous because there is a set of invisible hands, nail pierced hands for your information. That is Jesus' hands that will always hold Taiwan's close and always protected in his care. God bless Taiwan. And shofar is an instrument that not, not all of us here are very familiar with, but it is an instrument of war and praise in the history of Israel. You know the story about Joshua taking over, conquering the promised land? Shofar isn't far away. This is an instrument that calls forth God's power to march with them into the battlefield. So I, I hereby has, has drawn the shofar and someone uh, blowing it uh, forcefully, powerfully. You can feel the dynamic. This is a dynamic painting calling out, uh, calling for war to protect the saints. The Jerus Jerusalem is the holy city of God, the city of David. And I believe that you are more precious than Jerusalem itself because you are the living city of God. 
Uh, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit and He loves you very much. And today, there are m- many, many angels, though we can't hear them nor see them, many angels are, th- are blowing their shofar to alarm all of the angelic forces of heaven to protect you and your family and your business and whatever you do every day. Let's raise our voice each and every day to praise Jesus who loves us so much. He, he is our true protector. He is our true warrior. He is the general of the army of God. And we are his soldiers. Praise the Lord. Again, still about Taiwan. And this number of series of paintings, let me tell you, uh, two of them are specifically Taiwanese. And this one uh, is called God Bless Taiwan. It's not only my wish, it's my prayer. As I mentioned before that, uh, uh, in the previously f- a few other paintings, uh, how you know I pray a lot for Taiwan, and then one day when I was praying for Taiwan, another vision was given to me. This one was actually the earlier one. I saw God sending His gold and silver upon Taiwan, never undermine its size. Taiwan is truly blessed. There are so many impossibilities that have happened in your history. Look at your people. They are so prosperously blessed by Jesus. Though some of them do not know Christ at all, but nonetheless, God blesses them anyway. So therefore, I have used a very unique material here. I've used the, I've sprinkled it with silver, silver dust all over, as if this dust of silver, they come, they, they're coming out of that hand, that nail pierced hand, Whose hand is this? Definitely, it, be, it is the hands of Jesus that I have illustrated. And Taiwan is so blessed. God wants to remind you, silver or gold are His. And He's sending it to you because He loves you, dear Taiwanese. I challenge you, I dare you to count this sheep one by one and they number 100 exactly. So this is a painting to, as, uh, to serve, that serves as a statement for every home who believes in God that none of your family members shall go missing. None shall be lost. Maybe not in the physical sense because you know your way back home. But it is important in the spiritual sense that no one is a lost sheep in your home. In this house, no sheep is lost. 100 sheep. And I just imagine that this naughty one, <laughs> playful one, this small one here is the one that was missing that Jesus found uh, while he was leaving the 99 behind. So now, Chuan Jia Fu, everyone is home happily in the presence of God, in the blessings of Christ. And there is no greater joy indeed in this life than to be able to eat together a meal with your family and loved ones. And Jesus reminds us to this painting, five plus two equals five thousand. Jesus wants to remind us that, you know, he is not only the provider of food and meals in your home, he's able to multiply your blessings so other people can also be, be blessed to your family. E er san si wu, five loaves of, uh, five, five bread and two fish. Here we, we are reminded that, that Jesus wants us as we eat together with our fam, with our family, that we should give thanks to him. Remember the story how Jesus gave thanks? He looked upward and then he broke the bread and thousands were fed. I believe that when your meal time is filled with thanksgiving, not complaining and whining, he's able to multiply your bread tomorrow and the day after and so on. Not only that your family can eat, wherever is found one of the members of your family, many people will eat. I have this saying, I'm a Mantova, Philip Mantova. Wherever there is a Mantova, soon enough there will be 5,000 mouths that a Mantova will feed. You must have that good pride. That is not a wrong kind of pride. That is the glory of God in each family that gives thanks. And here is the, the, the green background symbolizes thankfulness. 
that when one family is blessed, they will always feel like they're the richest family, even though in terms of wealth may not be so, may not be true, but you should always feel like the grass on your side is greener than your neighbors. That is a sure sign that a family is blessed because not because of the material things they have, but because of the spirit of things, thanksgiving that they have so plenty in their home. I do hope that such joy and happiness will color your home green always in his presence. Now we're done with green color. Let's go red again. Here is another blood red. Uh, and, and it's a picture about David and Goliath, that confrontation of this, the, of the, one of the greatest battle history in the world, how a young, small, little boy defeated one giant about three meter uh, tall. And I, I purposely drawn the abstract version of Goliath because our Goliaths differ from one another. Let me ask you, what is your greatest fear? And now, that is your Goliath. Imagine your greatest fear is the, the Goliath before you here in this painting. Just nail your greatest fear on this part of the painting where Goliath is. And imagine you to be here, put yourself in the shoe of David. I have not come with my might, with my power, with my weapons. I've not come with human abilities, but I've come in the name of the Lord. Goliath, I shall defeat you. You should con conquer your greatest fear. The atmosphere has been colored red here. We know that sky, the sky is never red in color like this. But I, I have done something that is not naturally known to men. This is as if our spiritual eyes, if they were open right now, we'll be able to see that the atmosphere around us and surrounding our personal battles have been colored red. We are covered by the blood of Jesus and your enemies is surrounded by the victory of Jesus. I know that you can defeat anything that you fear except the fear of God that makes you strong against anything. I pray for your victory today. I pray for your miracles today. And this painting is so powerfully speaking about that. Still about David, this young shepherd boy was hunted down as, a, as an animal by a, more, by a senior king. That king was King Saul, who was jealous of David. And David ran to a hiding place called En Gedi, which is actually a place of rocks. And, in, and through the cleft of these rocks, I, I illustrated how David actually was also fearful, and yet he did not let his fear get the better of him. Instead, he used that as a place to worship. And here in En Gedi, he wrote a psalm, Psalms 91, in the shadow of the Almighty. And if you look in details, these rocks, I purposely had crafted with my, uh, with my brushes the Hebrew version of Psalm 91. And if you look closely and intently, you'll be able to find some of the words of the Psalms all over the walls of the rocks where David was. And of course, he was playing the harp, the small harp. And the harp sound is beautiful. I know so because my daughter also plays the harp. She's a harpist. And when you play any instrument, even though your heart could be fearful, could be intimidated, but if you praise God nonetheless, the presence of God will be your rock. And I have known God for tens of years. And one of the best ways for me to describe who he is to me as is, he is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He lays me down, he lies me in, the, in green pastures and the, the, small, uh, the still water. And here, I'd like to see myself being that lamb, being held close to his heart. And the Lord is, is my sense of security. His staff protects me. And he always anoints me. 
And this is a golden image of a relationship, the best kind of relationship the universe, the universe could ever see. The relationship of a human being with his creator and the re restored relationship between a sinner and his God. And now I am his lamb, you are too. And he is our shepherd, the shepherd of our hearts. He knows us better than our mothers know ourselves. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Jesus is the shepherd of my soul. He loves you. Let me introduce to you now this painting called Your Fruit Tree. You know, all of us have a, a genealogy. We have a family tree to show. Some comes from ordinary lines while others extraordinary. But you can start your own family tree involving the Holy Spirit in your life and in your home, in your family. And when you involve Him in your history, this one thing will happen. Your family tree will be filled with spiritual fruits of righteousness. You know, in the book, in the, in the book of Galatians, in the Bible, in the, in the New Testament, it's listed there are nine spiritual fruits. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And you can find these here. For instance, here is the uh, agape or the unconditional love of God. Who could demonstrate that better than Jesus Christ on the cross? And then you see here, this is the fruit called peace, Irene, or it's symbolized here with a dove. And here is joy, joy, and the grape or the vine or the wine. The joy of the Holy Spirit, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Faithfulness, for instance, here is symbolized by a dog. A dog is always one of the most faithful and loyal uh, friend of human beings. And uh, they, we, we have a, even a saying that good dogs are uh, men's best friends, right? So we could be God's best friends through loyalty. And, and this is a very detailed piece of art. It, it's taken me, it took me a long time to finish because when you want to draw something that represents uh, the beauty of the Christian life, this is one of those pieces that you could enjoy the most. And this tree is well planted and rooted in the soil of God or in the word of God. And the blood of the Lord always covers its root. Our foundation is strong. And even though the soil is dark, black and, 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 and brownish color, in color, because we are planted in real life with real struggles, yet we can grow mighty as a tree with so much fruit on it. This is beautiful. And here are the flowers. This symbolizes the lily of the valley. And this flower symbolizes Jesus' presence in our, in our lives. And all kinds of different experiences human has, humans have each and every day of their life. Your tree will not be affected. When you grow in the Lord, you grow strong and you produce real fruits through life's struggles in uh, and out to thick and thins, you will produce love, joy, peace, and kindness. And this is a fine print of uh, my previous work. The original version is not here anymore. And this one is called Fear Not, I Am Here. So enjoy this image about Jesus walking on the water and giving calm to his panicking disciples. Aren't we usually the panicking one? And Jesus always calm. And when we think that he's, he's already lost his handle, let me tell you, he's always, always in control over your life. And that is also true when we feel like our lives filled with just darkness all around. And Jesus in the wilderness, this is the picture, this is the image uh, of this painting. It's, but I have entitled it, He Understands, because the one thing that we we desire the most when we are going through hard time is for God to understand our situation. Well, He does. You know, 
You know, Jesus, he felt what you feel. He walked where you walk. And he knew what you're going through. Because Jesus had been tempted in all sorts of ways. Only that he did not sin. But we do. We sin. Therefore, he can help us through our situations. Don't ever say that God is irrelevant. The word of God isn't for today. And whether he will, he will, he will reject you when you come to him because you are not worthy. Let me tell you, God is all compassionate. Because Jesus was once tempted for 40 days and nights alone in the wilderness. And here is the picture of my heart when I'm going through tough time. My heart is filled with just black and white. Isn't your heart also like that sometimes? And look at the peace and calm at the center, center point of this painting. is showing us that Jesus is standing still, defending our territory and saying to you and me, don't worry, son. Don't worry, my daughter. I understand you. I'll get you out alive. You will be victorious. Just keep following me. Though maybe not tomorrow that you're coming out of this wilderness, but I assure you that you will come out. You'll come out all right because I understand you. I am for you and no one can be against you. Not even the wilderness can scare us or intimidate us because when we have Jesus in our heart, at the center of our soul, everything will be beautiful in its time. Everything will be all right. So don't stress it out, okay? Don't be depressed. Not worth it. Instead of being depressed, I think you should be more aware of your calling. Here is a divine calling. This is a picture about Moses. The burning bush is very classical in the Bible. That story, almost uh, even kids in the Sunday school, uh, in Sunday schools, they, 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 have, they have listened to that story before. And this is your calling. And it's a, I, need, I, I don't need to say a lot of things about it. Many of you already know and are familiar with the calling of Moses in the wilderness. Instead of being intimidated, being lonely, Moses found God and he found his divine calling for his life. And his life had truly blessed millions of people, especially the Israelites. And I know that your life could be such a great blessing to others too, if you can find and hear God calling you. Our courage and our boldness, they are well rooted in one character. He's the Lion of Judah. He's not, only, he's not only gentle, but he is full of authority. And you see the unique thing about this lion is because this lion is wearing a crown of thorns. This is not a real lion, of course. I'm actually drawing the symbol of Jesus Christ, the Lion of Judah. Can you feel that he's not afraid? That though you are shaken, he is not. Therefore, in the animal world, lions are called the king of the jungle. Yes, they are the kings of the jungle. But Jesus is the king of all kings. And he is not only calm, he is not only powerful, he has got authority. I'm not afraid of tomorrow because I know someone is in my tomorrow for me. God, God's son, Jesus Christ, who died for you and I. If he died for me, that crown of thorns on his head says it all. That he loves us so much that he gave up his own life. If he loves us so much, what should we even fear of tomorrow? Because we know that he's going to defend us. He is going to be with us. He loves you. Not only that he's all love, he is all power too. He is the lion of Judah. And this, this piece is named in this house we wash each other's feet and though he is so powerful this Jesus is yet he wash his disciples feet. You see one cannot be too powerful even God himself stooped so low to minister to the lowly as you and me. And he is so good he washed Peter's feet in that biblical story. But I have purposely caused this painting to, 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 I've drawn faceless men in order for you to find your place in one of them. Sometimes we are the spectators, sometimes we are the one whose, whose feet is being washed, or sometimes we are the ones who are washing other people's feet. We take turns 
Nobody can just give, give, and give. Sometimes we must receive too. No one can just serve, serve, and serve. Sometimes we need to be served too. I do not want you to miss. You see the foot here, not only that its skin is darker than the rest of this person's body skin, uh, but also it is larger in size than its sandal. Why is it? Because we oftenly, we are oftenly tempted to exaggerate our reality because the feet are, our, are the reality that touches the ground. The feet feel the earth, you see? So sometimes we like to elaborate. We feel like we are the most, the most, uh, the most poor people in the world. When we have problems, we, we feel that our problems are the greatest in the world. And that part of us need to be continually washed by the word of God and by the love of Jesus. I'm not saying that your problems are not real nor serious. I'm just saying that we should not glorify or magnify it more than the word of God and his promises. And when the foot is being washed, this dirty foot, being washed in the, in the, in the water, in the clean water, the thing is the water doesn't become contaminated. Instead, the food becomes clean. When you serve other people, you don't get affected by, by them, but you are influencing them to be better. That is the true spirit of ministry. You do not let the world affect you, but you are the salt of the earth. You are to give them a, a godly influence that changes their lives. I do hope that you are that, that you will not be you want, you want to be influenced uh, by the negativity around you, but you're going to change that because Jesus, he who washes his disciples' feet, he lives in you. Come with me. The last one of all. This one is also not the original piece, but uh, the fine print that is shown in this exhibition. Here's another one, theme around Moses and Moses parting the see. Yes, this is the birth of God's holy nation. I do hope that you enjoy this piece as well. It is, it is uh, dynamic. Some of the paintings, they are very calm, very peace-giving, but others are very dynamic and powerful, and this piece as well. I do hope that you have enjoyed my tour with you. I pray that your heart has been changed, and Jesus loves you, and everything that I've explained to you, these are God's word, not just stories. These are the life-giving words for your life today. Bless you.